really weird thing on my background. But that's okay. I hope. I hope. <laughs> oh, and the dorkiest part has just come up. All right. Hi, everybody. I am Rebecca from Chemnet. And, oh, sorry. Um, hey, guys, I'm live right now. Uh, did I just mean a little loud when I'm doing my intro? Um, oh no, and it's jerking. It says I have excellent connection though, so let's cross our fingers. All right. Hi everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the February 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Every month around the 15th, I pick a new inspiration photo and I use that to design one or more colorways on usually a few different yarn bases, and we just play with color and have fun. But since it's a dialogue, that means that I'm inviting all of you to participate in this at home as well. And I want to see what you can create inspired by the same beautiful fruit salad. Um, this is a photo that actually goes along with a recipe. The blogger, uh, should double check. Uh, <laughs> The blogger, I think, is in the description. Um, so it's Julia's album. It's the winter fruit salad with maple lime dressing. And there's a link to the recipe where the photo is from in the video description. Um, but I was inspired by these bright greens and oranges and reds. And if you remember, I did try a fruit salad, sort of an Australian Christmas inspired colorway back in December. And I wanted to have like a little go, something similar again, but I was dealing with a photo this time versus just sort of a mental image. And so we're going to have fun and play with a lot of these colors. Oh, but right, how can you participate in this? In the live stream recaps, which will show up in about a month, I usually let it go for three to five weeks um, from when I first released the photo. I will pick some of your pictures of the yarn that you dyed. Just share it on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue or reply to this photo, this photo on the public uh, Chemnitz Facebook page and you can be featured. Uh, the, the link to the post on the Facebook page is currently the pinned post, but it is also in the video description of here, a link to the actual post. If you post your pictures inside the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group, the default is to keep all of that private. Um, so if you want to be featured, make sure it's outside the group. Um, but sometimes in the group, I might ask because yeah, people might want to say hello, 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 everyone. I should put together DVDs of different techniques. Hmm. I mean, I am going through, I would like to do some more like full on, like more concise tutorials versus experiments. And I do have things. Whenever I do something like that, the editing, it usually takes me a lot longer. And so I'm now getting more comfortable in front of the camera, but I definitely have plans to do some more like 101 type videos. And uh, yeah, um, but hello, hello, hello everyone. Yeah, and so let's see, any other, why can I not? See, they changed up. I'm still getting used because I can't see, oh. Okay, there I can see the animal, yeah. Like it's harder for me to like find all of the info that I'm used to because they changed things up on me, but that is fine. Yeah, so today let's make our image smaller. Now I did realize something after one of the last streams and that is the fact that the colors when I do, the colors when I do these evening streams are not Great. And part of that is I was like, wow, I don't know what's like with the webcams, not really capturing photos as true. And then I realized that it's not really the webcams as much as it is the nighttime lighting and the light bulbs <laughs> um, in daylight. When we have daylight coming through, there's a lot of windows in my kitchen when there's daylight in here, the colors read a little more true on camera. So things are always a bit more muted and reds and purples especially don't show up as well. So sometimes I will take pictures and share it like on an Instagram story, just if I feel like what I see here on the monitor 
uh, isn't capturing the beauty that I see in person. Um, you don't do editing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, ed editing is my uh, dear, dear friend. <laughs> All right, let me move because right now I'm showing you some of the backup colors. Um, but so here are some of the colors that I've pulled and I don't remember exactly what they are. I will let you guys know once I stand up. Um, but I pulled a bunch of Dharma acid dye colors. The one, I realized I don't have a good burgundy. The closest thing I have, and it's some, I don't know if it's like a currant or a cherry or something in there. The closest thing I have is espresso bean, which is sort of a purpley color. So I'm hoping that like that could give like a that darkish pop and maybe I could layer some red with it. Um, but I think that sour apple will probably be good for the kiwi. Um, the I've got a few oranges pulled, a couple reds, and we're going to have fun. Now for yarn today, I pulled a bunch of Knit Picks bases. We've got some of my favorites, I've got Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, Swish DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino, uh, I think Big O, which is a 50-50 Superwash Merino Nylon, uh, and Will of the Andes Worsted. They've all been pre-soaking for a couple hours in some water with vinegar, um, so that way we can do some tabletop techniques. Now, since we're playing with dry acid dye powder today, I will be wearing a respirator mask and safety glasses and gloves while I'm dealing with the powders, which means that my voice will be more muffled. But where I'm going to be working directly next to where the, I guess, the microphone is, the mic, since I'm only doing one webcam today, a lot of times I have a camera on the counter, camera at the stove, and it's the one on the counter where the audio comes from. So if I'm wearing a mask at the stove, that feels more muffled. But I think things will work well today at least i'm very optimistic um, so hopefully the audio won't be too muffled but if it is and people wonder about that in the chat while i'm up at the counter please let them know that that is why um <laughs> and yeah switch dk in your happy colors i just realized i'm getting low on switch dk i only have like a bag and a half left um it's been very very popular lately with um people getting the dipo weekly sponsorship a lot of people have been requesting the Swish DK, which is a beautiful base, so I can understand that. Um, oh, fun. Uh, yes, okay, so let me think. Um, oh, and I do wanna say, so I'm using Nitpicks Yarns. I am a Nitpicks affiliate marketer, which means that I do earn commission from Nitpicks by referring sales. And so the links that like I might share in the chat and the links that I share, um, like in the video description, I try to clearly mark anything that is an affiliate link um, just so that way you all know. And I'm going to drop my link into chat in just a second. There. Um, yeah, and so I did buy, I do buy all the yarn from Nitpicks myself. Um, if I sent anything, I try to also make that clear. But I just want to make things like abundantly clear about like the sourcing and whatnot. Um, so the plan for today is we're going to be dyeing our yarn on the countertop and then steam setting it on the stove off camera. <laughs> so that's, that's our plan. And this is a technique that I really like. And the technique that we're going to do, so... The last time I tried fruit salad, I went for slow immersion speckles. And there was a point when I was like, maybe I should have stopped. But you know, I kept going a bit, right? I kept going and going and going. Um, and so we lost some of that white. I think that in general, if you want to try to preserve white on your yarn, doing some kind of hand painted technique on the countertop is a great way to go. Uh, it's just easier to keep like pastel color from spreading. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna be doing countertop and then steam setting and random colorways. I'm gonna be doing that yarn mop technique that I love. I'm gonna have dry powder uh, and I'm basically gonna stick my fingers in various cups of dry powder, wipe it on the yarn, moving it kind of randomly, but it's gonna be a little less random because my focus is on the yarn mops versus 
focus being on another yarn and the yarn mop just being there to wipe my hands off. So there's a little more intent there, but I'm curious to see how similar or different these different skeins and different yarn bases might look when we're playing with it all like around the same time. Um, oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. Um, no, so sometimes like it's really, I was talking about this in a Patreon behind the scenes live stream the other day. And it's really, really easy for me to love a colorway when I'm like, okay, I wonder what will happen if. It's those times when I have like something super specific in mind that I can get a little more disappointed. Um, and so in a video that will be coming up gosh, probably by the time I knit it, it's summer or next winter, who knows. But uh, in the video, I was dying some yarn for myself with a project in mind and trying to like meet a vision that I had in my head. Um, so yeah, but I am very, very excited. And the thing, one th other thing I need to keep in mind for today, well, I guess since we're not entirely speckling because we'll be sort of dragging the powder on the yarn a little bit, but colors when they're dry can be very different from the same colors when you dissolve them and have them at like a 1% DOS. So when you speckle, that's pretty much as pigmented as you can get. I mean, I suppose you could get more pigmented, but that's like really, really high pigmentation usually. Uh, and so a lot of yellows look very, very orange. So I have a golden poppy, which is a beautiful, more golden orange, but that is gonna look, that's gonna be the better orange color, maybe even than tangelo, which will look a little bit more red because of just the intensity of the powders. So, yes. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to say goodbye to my face. Good night, child. <laughs> oh, I was gonna like go and look at camera and you guys can't see me anymore. Okay. So let's try to make this so that we'll be able to see the chat while I am up here and hopefully not trip on my laptop cable. And as this goes on, um, I will be like chance. I will be glancing at the chat periodically. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So I pulled a bunch of like reds, pinks, greens, um, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this picture bigger right now. As, and the nice thing about this one is that like I can easily just look at a portion. So I definitely want Cherry Bomb. Um, ooh, Saffron Spice, that could be good. Tangelo might be a little pink, but maybe on like the first one, we'll play, play with some of that. Sour Apple, I love that as a green. Brilliant, there's not like a lot of yellow per se, but some brilliant yellow could come in handy either mixed with one of these to make it a little more orange or on its own like layered on top. So when I found in other videos, when you mix dry powders, you do get some separation of the colors on yarn and stuff, but also you do get some blending. Um, so there's that. Um, I know from Hanukkah that this looks, that the golden yellow looks a little bit more like saffron spice when speckled, but when swiped, it might feel different. The espresso bean might be a little too deep so I'm a little on the fence about that, but I think that Berry Crush will be too pink. So I don't know, I don't, I'm not expecting to go into those colors, but I pulled them just in case. And I should add that everything I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment that's not for, used for food. Um, because we are dealing with commercial dyes. Now, looking for more cups. I re I like the I like using clear cups and you can see like sometimes I still have like labels written on them. So that's seven colors. I have no idea what my children are doing right now. Um, let me check. Hello, hello everyone. Um, not that late. Oh. 
you have it up on the TV and the color temperature is completely different than it is on the monitor. Um, yeah, the, the colors, like, they, colors can look so different on different screens. Okay. Respirator is all the way over there. So I always link like the tools and stuff that I use in my video description. And I also even now have a blog post on my website where I talk about my favorite tools and equipment and go into a lot of details there. But in video descriptions now, I'm putting an asterisk next to something that is an affiliate link to make it a little more clear. So like Amazon links, like I get commissions there as well, um, along with nitpicks. But Dharma Trading Company, I don't, but I still include the links to things that I use because, I mean, I think that it's helpful for a teacher to share their tools. So these are just some safety glasses. So that way you got to protect your eyes. And this is the respirator. And I might need to trade out the cartridges, but I clean... I clean the outside of it periodically and I think only once have I found any color like on here I mean I'm still gonna wear it of course but yeah but it's probably time for me to replace um, some of those filters but yes prepare for more muffled when I started oh goodness when I started I used more of a face mask uh, but this respirator, and let me show you guys, uh, uh-oh, okay, so the respirator has a tighter seal around my face. You can see the bulge in my cheeks, uh, so like when it's just a mask, there's some gaps, and here, there's not really. Like, if I cover this and breathe, then, like, there's nowhere else air is getting through. Um, the only problem is my nose gets itchy. And so that is annoying. But safety is important. Uh, there. Okay. But to some extent, people make a lot of different choices for what they will and won't, won't do in their home. And that is okay. All right. So... Because I don't want to have to wash my gloves over and over and over again, and because I'm going to want to go in and out of colors, I am going to aliquot them. And what that means is we're going to take a little bit of these colors and put it into some cups. Oh, but I want to get... I'll find the inspiration photo for now. Okay. So for something like the espresso bean, where I don't think I'm going to use a lot, I'm not taking very much. I can always go back in with a clean spoon. Okay, and I know I want some cherry bomb. And I'm picking more. I'm dipping the spoons just into some water here um, just to collect some powder. Tangelo is pretty pinky, but I like this color. This color might not exactly, oh my goodness, be, that might be a little too much, be in there, but we're going for it. Okay, the yellow, again, there's not a ton of a bright yellow, but this will be more of a pale orange almost. Okay, saffron spice is a beautiful, oh, well, this might do well, like, with some yellow. I guess 
I'm going to almost be feeling like I'm blending eyeshadows or something. Um, not that you want to put acid dyes on your eyes. Just something about this is like giving me vibes right now. Um, I mean, you know how like with an eyeshadow you might like dip into one color and dip into another. Like golden poppy might be the orange of our dreams today. Okay, and then sour apple. Okay. Sour apple, I think, is going to have to be a good friend to us today. And you got some clumps of something in here. It's got a lot of sour apple. Okay, now I'm not mixing anything with citric acid or anything like that. Okay, so we've got a little bit of those colors pulled. We've got like our spoons are just dripping in the sink. May as well leave no dye behind while we are at it. And okay, we're going to pull some yarn, but first. I'm actually, okay, so do you want me to pull the gloves while I go pull the yarn and then put them back on? Okay, and hopefully, oh good, you guys can see the powders, that's good. Um, oh goody, I'm so glad. Uh, maybe not the whole paper straight off. Yeah, yeah, I just haven't bothered. Okay, so I don't know if I'm going to fit all six things on. Um, so I'm removing gently a lot of liquid, but there is still some liquid in here. When I'm doing a yarn mop, you want it wet enough so that way you want it wet enough um, so that way the dye will like dissolve, but you don't want it dripping. Okay, so this is the big O. Here is the Swish Decay. Uh, oh, good. That's all on screen. Good, good. And things are sort of bunched up because we're going to be picking up and moving and spreading the yarn as we go. Okay, so, so far we've got Fido. And sorry if I don't talk quite as much. It's harder to talk a lot with the respirator. Breathing is uh, more effort. Um, but the Big O is 50% Superwash Merino, 50% Nylon. Swish is 100% Superwash Merino. Wool of the Andes is 100% uh, Peruvian Highland Wool. And then, Okay, and then we've got 200 grams of straw fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And attached on all the skeins are the reusable nylon zip ties that I love. And actually, <laughs> I have things numbered today. So one and two are the swish, uh, three and four, I think are the stroll, six is the wool of the Andes, and five is the big O. I'm not going to have trouble telling these skeins apart. I know these bases really well, but <laughs> I just thought it was fun. 
Um, okay, so. Oh, hello, everyone. Oh, my. It must be super, super late on. Um, it must be super late in Germany. Okay, I am going to pull up the image and look. So, okay. I definitely want some white left behind. I want a lot of orange and red and green. Okay, maybe, uh, oh, you know what I can do? Uh, let's see, let's make you small, but maybe I should just open a big one for myself on my computer. That would be smart. I am smart, right? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh. Okay, so I have a big one up for reference. Okay. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, da, da, da. Um, got like a rogue strand of hair that, okay. Got that in a bobby pin. Let's start with some of our green. So I'm starting by making my fingers a little damp. Then I'm gonna just go into the green, which you can't see, I'm just tapping it. And like, uh-oh, I've got some dye on my fingers. And then I'm just wiping, wiping it off on the yarn. So maybe I should try to like pinch and be like, oh, I've got some dye on my fingers and I'm just wiping it off. And that is our technique. But you can see, okay, things are more spread out a little bit than they might be when I'm doing this. Um, maybe I should just stick with like one finger. Whoops. Uh, things are more spread out when I, when I do this from a live stream a bit. It's hard to say. For sure. <laughs> but you know, we'll be moving these stains around and sort of just wiping on them. It's a very, very random kind of thing. And we'll be going through multiple, multiple times. But even by like moving and turning, the colors sort of spread. Because like here, if I turn it like that and sort of tap, uh, some of that green color spreads through. So it's really using these skeins as, oh, funny, we got some yellow from that. Um, yeah, we're just using these skeins as literal mops. <laughs> now we won't be able to fit them all at the same time uh in our in our pan and i didn't entirely think about having an actual mop around okay so that's our green let's go in my fingers aren't completely clean but let's go into some golden poppy and it's hard because it's not sinking in right away is this really the golden poppy because that's looking, okay, it's just, it's not, it takes a little time to dissolve. Because it's like, it's looking very brown. So like the green's kind of sunk in right away. And this one's taking a little more time. But over here, um, I can start to see what the color might look like. So one of the things I'm curious about is I'm curious, like this is a full on random technique, even more random than normal. And I wanted to do something that had a lot of warmth in it. I, I like cool tones a lot. I'm definitely more drawn to like the blues and purples and greens than I am oranges and reds. But, yeah, I try to pick colors outside of my comfort zone. 
Okay. Yeah, you guys can't see very much at all, can you? Um, yes, I often feel like my yarn mops come out a little bit better than some of what I intended. And I'm doing just a tiny bit of this yellow. I don't want to go in and do as much yellow as I did that orange, but... Okay, and as, thinking of orange, oh dear. Well, good thing. So now we've got more, the, can, the oh, I guess this is a saffron spice. That is going to give us more. Some more of these orange tones. It feels like funny for me to have this assembly line. I've done this with like rainbow colors uh, and stuff. And the only thing that was unfortunate with the last time I tried to intentionally recreate this kind of technique was that I was trying to dye, I was trying to recreate the yarn for an, a, for an acquaintance who didn't really, we had some communication issues over different fiber types. And so when I got the yarn, I was like, oh, this is not going to really work the way we want it to work. Uh, and so that was a, shit, a bit of a bummer for me. Um, and yeah, so now I'm going to take a step back. Oh, and squeeze that, and we're going to go and check and make sure I did not just squirt that all over the floor. Because this is why you always want a clean work surface. Um, you want a clean work surface, and you want to uh, be wearing protection in case, like, you put dye somewhere, but I think it probably just stayed on the counter. I just am checking. Yeah, so this is just showing me right now that my floor is dirty. I am not seeing any orange, so that is good. Um, yeah, the squeeze bubbles would have been fun with this as well. So things would be uh, more bright and pigmented uh, than they are in prison. Let me, since I'm currently gloveless, let's do a quick. Share an Instagram photo. Um, share. Mm -hmm. Stories. There we go. So on Instagram, I'm just at Ken Nets. Uh, and I feel really bad. I've been getting a lot more uh, DMs lately. And so I've been a lot slower to respond to things, and I've even missed things sometimes. So if you've reached out to me and haven't heard back, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, it is not my intent to, like, ignore you. Um, okay, I'm now moving and repositioning the yarn, looking for whitish areas. And this is something, a lot of times my yarn mops end up being off camera, but this is definitely something that I do with them. And that is reposition to look for the areas with the least color as I go to add more. And I know I've been moving these a lot, but there's still areas that are trapped 
Um, that's it. And this is getting my hands nice and damp again. Let's do some tangelo. Let's see. It's going to take a while for that to sink in. Yeah, the tangelo, see, it's an orange color, but it's coming up very, very red, almost pink. that's a lot um, and so the goal is not to cover up all the white that exists the goal is to and so that actually is one thing that's definitely different here than if I was doing it the patches of color are smaller than if I was doing this for real if I was doing this as a real yarn mop each individual patch of color would um, like not necessarily be as spread out because I'm going in multiple times and sort of dotting if that makes some sense but I just thought that this random technique would be really really fun for this fruit salad kind of colorway. Just hopefully we won't end up with brown. I mean, I love brown. That's just not the color that we want today. And I pulled this yarn because I get, ooh, that's so pretty. Um, I get questions about, um, you know, oh, do I not use bigger, or not bigger, do I not use bulky yarns very much? And I definitely don't do bulky as much as I would say the most of what I do is a, a combination of fingering and DK. But I absolutely love, love, love. Um, I love doing, um, oh, maybe that would be good for the that deep red color. Maybe I don't even need the espresso bean. But we'll see how that sinks in because it'll probably be brighter once it sinks in. Um, yeah, I mostly do fingering and DK because I think that that's what I tend to knit with the most. But I definitely have some bulky videos coming up on the channel. Don't you worry. So in the salad, I definitely see pomegranate. I see... What do I see? I saw pomegranate. I saw... There were apples, there was definitely a citrus. Um, and I don't know if it was like a cranberry. I, I could have looked at the recipe. Of course I didn't. <laughs> uh, I did make an Oreo cheesecake today though. So I used to have a food blog <laughs> called Ken Eats. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> And on that, I would post my, um, just the recipes that I was doing. Um, it was like, just the way that Chemnitz started as sort of this journal for me, I tried to do the same kind of thing. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if I want any espresso bean, and so what I'm going to do is take it onto, and that's not damp enough. I don't think I want it. Um, I think that it's too deep. It doesn't have that warmth that the rest of our salad has. I'm really, really liking where we are. And shoot, I don't have the second steamer pot, so I don't think I'm going to be able to fit everything. Although maybe I'm not 100 percent done either. Um Insert pot. 
Um, okay, I'm going to peek at the stat. Uh, the, um, oh, I'm going to come back. Chartreuse would be a good grain, um, Jakarta Chartreuse. Um, I'm going to come, I'm going to, okay, I think, like, I like this one a lot. You need, like, a pot of green. Yeah, I need a little more green. So on the wool of the Andes, where I've never really tried this technique before, um, things are definitely more spread out and more muted because it's not super washed. Um, oh, that's so pretty. Uh, let's give you a little bit some cherry balm. Okay, and you. Okay, let's, what do you want? You want some golden. And some saffron. The fun thing about this is everything can lay on top of each other. And none of the colors are even set yet per se, but, uh, and I don't think I went overboard. I don't think we're in evil fairy territory either. I don't know. I think that this is pretty. I think that this is really, really pretty. <laughs> There's some techniques that take so much more time than others. And this technique is a fast one. <laughs> um, but it's the reason why it's usually a mop. Um, and so... Okay, I think there's definitely differences. Like right now this one's looking more pigmented than that one and things like that. I am going to carefully go to the steamer basket now. And carefully put In. You could definitely wait more time before adding the yarn in. Hey, Big O, do you want to help me out? It goes going to have a little more all over color, and I might forget by the time I get to the recap why. And the why is because I'm wiping up the counter. Hopefully, I remember. <laughs> oh, that's even super pretty. Okay. I also have timer shortly. Right now, I want to wipe this up a bit. And then take a break from the respirator. I mean, at this point, you could come in with more and more and more yarn, but the amount of color left on here right now isn't very much. Now, still after the stage, if I were to go white more, um, we would get 
Uh, if I were to wipe more at this point, we would get um, some color, probably. Set a timer. There's a lot of yarn in there, so I'm going to set it for 30 minutes. Um, all right, and I'm coming down to the counter. Now, the thing that I'm doing right now that is not the best um, is that there is still currently open dye in my kitchen. Um, so in theory, um, I should, like, I, I should still be wearing a mask, but um, I'm far away where I cannot, oh, I'm a little, like, blown up. I'm far away where I cannot like pull it off the counter or anything. And so this is sort of my comfort level, but if I'm going to be touching or moving or wiping up the dye, then I would put the mask back on. Um, all right. So, um, I did see some questions go through and I wasn't sure. So I saw one question briefly and I wasn't sure if it was directed to me or not, but it was, um, what was my favorite class, uh, while I was in Australia and Let's see, I really enjoyed, um, I took a Pharaohs and Empires class that was really interesting um, because for a period of time after that, I could sort of place, like looking at something, I'm like, oh, I know of like the time period that that came into because of the like kind of style of the art. Um, that was really cool, as was I did like a history of fashion class that was really interesting. Um, Gosh, but I think maybe it was even just the origins of Australia class. It was really nice to learn like the history of like being there. But like one of the biggest things is like I have never traveled so much, I guess, in my life. Like we really took advantage and went, I mean, I went up and down the eastern coast. Um, and so it was really, really cool because I don't think I've spent that much time even like travel. I mean, I've. I haven't spent that much time, like in a small period of time, trying to travel and visit and see different sites, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so let's see. Okay, so you're talking about an apron. So yeah, Chartreuse makes a good green. Chartreuse and Kelly Green from Jacquard are both very, very, very similar. Oh, that's not a video that you guys will have seen. Oh, okay. Um, there was a video, which, and I have no idea when it'll be available. Hopefully, at some point um, but there's a video when actually once the video that I it's a video that I then redid because I didn't like but I tried to do like a fade with like chartreuse and chili green and they were just too close to each other that you couldn't really tell and I was like oh well that sort of like defeated part of the purpose of what I was trying to do um, but that video that I was filming once the other thing like gets to be something, then maybe I can do something with that out the footage that I then rejected. Um, I don't know why this is looking so grainy. I'm going to make myself smaller. Um, okay. Um, so the green is sour apple. I did pull out avocado, but I decided not to use it. Um, I definitely need to fill in some gaps in my Dharma collection. Uh, let me, I want to grab my, I have like a list. Now's a good time to think about what colors I want. Okay, so I like the Dharma catalog, and I have on here the colors that I have. I have little tick marks, um, and I find that like a helpful way to play with it. Before I taped, so I got one of the posters, and I cut it up, and I taped them on the top of the jars, which I love that. That was from um, Little Bean Loves Yarn. She, told, she does that, and so I got that from her. Um, yeah, I think I want some more like pinks, some more yellows. Uh, yeah, I need like a Cabernet or Deep Maroon or an Aubergine. Like that's something I'm absolutely missing. Um, yeah, 
yeah but i have so i have a complete collection of dharma dyes and i like or sorry i have a complete collection of jacquard acid dyes thank you dyer supplier for for that um <laughs> but and i i like jacquard dyes i don't like the jars themselves as much because i can't like pinch the dye out and so that's probably a big reason why i don't use them as much as the dharma ones um but there's definitely a lot of colors from the jacquard line that i really 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 like um but yeah but the line so what there's 40 jacquard acid dye colors and there's at least double that there's maybe around 80 dharma colors so you could get away with probably a collection of eight colors like if you had like a magenta, a, like a bright blue, um, so like a cyan blue, a um, yellow, and then a black, and then maybe like a true brown in there, and maybe, um, and then maybe a few like deeper colors that could be harder to mix. You could get away with a lot with doing color mixing. But I like to play directly with the dry powders so much that that's one reason why I like having the pre-mixed colors, even if things break. Um, wait, the dye in the apron. Oh, you want to knit an apron and use it to dye it to white fingers. Um, I think the idea of a knit apron would be really cool. I would probably want it backed with some kind of fabric though. Um, mainly because like I'd worry since it's so like since knit fabric is so porous, like I'd worry about like some of the dye getting on my clothes and stuff. Um, Ooh, Sarah Thompson, that splatter look you're talking about looks cool. Sorry, I'm going back up. Um, yeah, so Sour Apple um, was the green that I used. I used Sour Apple Tangelo, um, which is like a pinky or red. I used Cherry Bomb, which is also a pinky red. Um, I used some Saffron Spice, which might be a little too deep for the picture, but I don't know, I wanted it. I like that orange. I used, um, oh, uh, golden, golden poppy, which is like a good orange, a hint of some yellow, um, some brilliant yellow, and that's basically what I used. Um, yeah, I mean, I've done, I've done comparison, what I haven't done yet, I've done some comparisons of like, I swatch crudely swatched all my dharma dyes randomly um just the powders on some liquid to see like oh do they break just sort of like a first impression dirty swatching kind of video not like a clean uh like one percent dos of all the colors to have like a swatch card or something but something so that way i can get a feel of okay this red is like more pink than this one this blue is a little more purple just to get like a relative sense um, between the colors. But I haven't done a lot of side-by-side -side of Dharma and Jacquard, which is something that I could definitely do at some point, um, just for a crude and dirty sense of how the colors relate to one another. Um, is linen yarn hard to dye? No. Um, I mean, I haven't dyed 100% linen, but I haven't found any linen blends I've dyed to be harder than cotton. You just need to make sure that you're using a dye type that works on cellulose fibers. So the acid dyes that I'm using today um, or food coloring, you want a protein based yarn for acid dyes and food coloring. So for that, you want like a wool, alpaca, silk. Uh, nylon has a similar, similar chemical structure to a protein. So nylon can be dyed with acid dyes, but otherwise synthetics, you need like different types of dyes. Um, Yeah, so I hope uh, that helps. Oh, I'm just not too far behind. Who left blue color on their list? On both, so I'd say that both Dharma and Jacquard have a lot of blues. They have a lot, a lot of blues, and they both have a lot of reds and pinks. What Jacquard doesn't have is a lot of purples, which surprised me. Um, 
yeah, I find like there's a few colors that I wish the Jacquard line had. Like they only really have one gray. And I, so my favorite black is Dharma um, True Black. Jet Black from Jacquard and uh, Toner Black, they both break when you speckle. True Black just gives you black speckles and it's great. Um, I haven't tried Ox Blood Red yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, the the final products. I'll I'll probably share a photo on Instagram uh, once the yarn is dry. Uh, but yeah, the the recap videos definitely take I would say three to five weeks to come out. I try to give people so usually like I had the recap video edited except for the last, the January recap video, I had it edited except for inserting your photo submissions, um, like the week that I did the yarn dyeing. Um, so that way it's ready to go. It's just then like the, okay, I am gonna sit and pull photos and um, put that in. That's the like thing that like, yeah, I'm like, uh, oh, it's like around the 13th and then I'm like, oh, I need to finish that video. Because if I do another kind of live stream, I try to, within a week, get a recap up to show the yarn. But I want to give people time to die along at home with these. Um, and so, yeah, if you're just tuning in and you want to participate in the Chemnitz Die Along, uh, dye some yarn inspired by this photo right there. And you can share your yarn, your fiber that you blend, the, whatever you knit, you're playing with color on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz Die Along. And then you make this bigger. The hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue. Yeah, right down there. Um, or you can uh, comment with a photo comment on Facebook on this this image right there. There's a link to that image, and it's currently the pinned image on my Facebook page, which is Chemnitz or Facebook.com slash Chemnitz. Um, have I had any issues with food coloring yarn dyed yarn fading? Um, so I have a video where I took broken violet and I put it outside in the sun. I had a wet skein and a dry skein and I left it out in the sun all day. The wet skein faded within hours. The dry skein did fade when left in the sun all day. Um, and that is my biggest, that video and trying that direct sunlight outside was my biggest experience with, uh, food coloring fading. I have the first... Let me grab my hat. I think it's over here. Well, okay, I don't the hat must be with my coat somewhere. Somewhere, but here are some mittens. This is the first wool yarn I ever dyed. Um it wasn't even in a video, it was just on my website. And I dyed this yarn over 10 years ago at this point. So, or around 10 years ago. And I probably knit these, gosh, I'm not sure. So they, these don't get as much wear. The hat that is with the same kind of colorway, I wear a lot. And that I would say has some slight fading, but I wear it all the time and I've worn it through, you know, eight some winters at least. So, you know, food coloring can last. I just, um, I also have the 10 hour Afghan that has the first yarn I ever dyed with food coloring. Like the, the colors were pastel because they were only 20% wool, but they, the color's still in there and that's out in my living room all the time. Just not in direct sunlight. Um, so what I don't have though is an example of something that I've washed like 20 times because I've hand washed these garments and things. I haven't put them through the washing machine. Maybe the 10 hour Afghan has gone through the washing machine, but I haven't put like those, those would felt in the washing machine. So I hand wash a lot of my hand knits. So there is that, but yes. Um, yeah, that is my, my question. Uh, uh, so you had two skates sitting on a box in your bedroom for a couple of months closed blinds and they faded where the sun came through. Yeah, so I had a knit butterfly. It's a little knit free knitting pattern on my website. And I had it on a windowsill for months and I picked it up and realized, oh my goodness, this faded. 
Um, I store my yarn inside clear plastic totes in a closet. In a room where there's not really any direct sunlight, there's definitely bright, they're exposed to light, but I haven't observed fading in like that kind of storage. But that is a reason why I don't store like my shop inventory like prettily on the shelf behind me. I just have fairy yarn there just because, I don't know, um, if that makes sense. Uh, Oh, you got a steamer insert for your catering tray. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, so I definitely have things crowded, crowded right now. But hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I know that this point, oh, did I not? Um, I meant to take a picture. I don't think I took one more picture of the yarns. I don't think I shared the updated picture on Instagram. So I will do that on my stories. Um, I guess it's about the same, but share. Uh, I have to figure out, I was supposed to be thinking instead of chatting. Um, nope, I don't want to filter. Uh, I'm supposed to be figuring out what to do with the rest of this yarn that I pulled because, you know, we gotta have some fun. We gotta have some fun with it. But yes, while, while you're at it and while we're sitting and chatting, uh, if you could make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on, you can give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> All that really, really helps uh, the content that we're producing here. And I cannot see how much time is on the timer. Um, and I also can't see chat right now. Um, ah, so yeah, some, so commercial fabrics can fade as well. Um, when it comes to commercial acid dyes, um, versus like when you buy, yeah, when you buy fabric at Mood, I don't know if you always know what it's dyed with. Um, but when it comes to like commercial acid dyes, they do, at least I think Jacquard has, uh, light fastness ratings for all the colors and some colors are more light fast than others. Um. Uh, okay, so how much more light faster than Dharma or Jacquard dyes? Um, that question popped up right after I said that. Um, there's not, I don't think there's like a fair comparison to it next to food coloring. Certainly since they're developed as a fabric dye versus a food coloring, uh, the longevity has been more tested. And so I think that you can find those ratings from Jacquard for the different colors. Um, but I'm not because people have asked, I'm not interested in doing the same kind of experiment outside to like see if fading happens over the day, like I did with the Wilton's Violet, because with the Violet, I people had been reporting fading. And so I knew I was trying to replicate results that I hadn't seen personally yet, but that other people had reported. And so if there's a Jacquard or a Dharma color that you've experienced fading on a short time scale, let me know and then I can test that. But I don't like want to try to use like, test all the colors one by one by one. Um, I think there are sites and I haven't gotten to look up what the different ingredients are and the different pigments in each different dye color. Um, I'm presuming that there are more acid dye pigments available and there are food coloring colors. So all food coloring is a mixture of the same, mostly six, occasionally seven molecules. Um, it's just the proportions are different for different colors. And so therefore, uh, yeah, the most yarn that's dyed with food coloring has, you know, it's the same kind of combination. Um, and it's not necessarily the case with commercial dyes. There's, my guess is there's more than seven, but again, I don't know. Um, so I hope that. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, things are going well. And actually, the kids sound quiet, so that's good. Um, yeah, it's uh, February vacation. Woohoo! <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, I got it. it's harder. It's hard to film in their home. It's in general easier. So I don't know if I should try to do these, like, the kind of sign-alongs, like, during the daytime for me. In general, it's much easier for me to film or live stream during the like time between like 8.30 and 
2.30 Eastern time because the kids are at school and so, and also the light is better. And so it's an easier like chunk of time. Um, but I know that, well, I know you guys are all international also. So um, thinking about like people who are working in the United States doesn't take into consideration the, our friends in Australia and in Europe. So uh, there is that. But hello, hello. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I am not sure, Addy, if anyone has done a light fastness rating for food dyes um, beyond just the anecdotal. And I think that the culprit, the big fading culprit, is that red number three. So I've observed fading in food. I observed fading in some purple sprinkles. I was like, oh, some of the, I don't know if it was the pinks that went away or maybe some of the blues went away and some of the and some sprinkles in a container. Um, but on the icing, I noticed that the, some of my purples were looking more blue and they were looking distinctively less purple than when I first put the frosting on. And so that's something that I've observed, but I hadn't really observed it as much. Um, red number three is a little finicky. If the conditions are too acidic, it'll crash out and you'll see like a red film. And so that's the reason why I don't think you see that used in beverages and things as often. Um, but it is like a beautiful bright pink. So it's used for like, it's why you don't have like a good, true bright purple Gatorade. There's like a lot of blues and you have the deep grape, like plum purple, but you don't have like a vibrant, like, oh, <laughs> the red balance is way off. You don't have a purple like this. Um, although on camera now it's looking more like golden violet. This is definitely in person more of a pink purple. And I like the blue purples. So anyway. Um, oh, the spinning into gold. That was really, really fun. The like dying through spinning. I need to do like more spinning. I just felt like, yeah, I, I need to like, just like I've been trying to carve some time, like some knitting time where I'm not filming or editing. Um, I mean, I'd love to do some more spinning. The spinning into gold was fun because that was, so that was um, a Kickstarter reward where like I would do like the whole, like the whole series, but yeah, it would be fun to do some of that again. Uh, it was so fun. Okay. I am going to go check on the yarn and come up with a plan because I've got some dye. Uh, seven minutes. Well, it looks unremarkable. <laughs> I mean, it looks just the same. So I don't know what I was expecting when I went and peeked. Um, I need some yarn. I need some yarn. Um, another skein of swish right here. Let me go dunk it. Looking for a zip tie. Um, I ran low on zip ties because when I was doing the like Chemnitz Clinica special. I used the zip ties to store um, yarn and keep different minis together and stuff. And so therefore, uh, like I was like, I need more zip ties. And now I have a million again because all that yarn has gone off to you guys. Um, <laughs> Getting all kitted back up. So this skein is definitely not pre-soaked. <laughs> but I am trying to remove like mega dry patches and have her pre-wet. Okay. 
for this kind of, these kinds of techniques, you need the yarn wet. Well, yeah, you need to give the, the, the dye something to stick to. But also, you need... Um, uh you need the acid at some point so trying to glow some wet hands oh my goodness so let me turn this so I can see the chat and let's make this smaller uh um, for a drop spindle, like sitting in a chair in the space from like where you're sitting to the floor works. Um, yeah, okay, so what do I want to do here? This one isn't as much about the photo as it is, ooh, I have an idea. Oh, that was a lot right there. It's not as much about the photo as it is about these colors that we have left. I guess I'm more speckling. Just sort of... Whoops. Adding... I have a lot. Of, oh no, that was a lot. Uh oh. <laughs> Let's uh, share that love, um, which was always the plan. Ooh, I think that's the tangelo color. That is beautiful. Okay. Um. I'm definitely going to need more yarn. Okay, I don't even know what I'm doing, uh, but I have a sense. We're trying to leave no dye behind, and I'm sort of dumping this dye on, and then we're going to be spreading it a bit. So that green might end up turning brown. Uh, the reds might be, this one is gonna feel a little foresty, a little fall-like. Okay, where do I need some more color? You. And, <laughs> Like, this is one of those situations where I am just letting these colors speak to me. And kind of do their, do their thing. Uh, there's definitely probably something clumped in here somewhere. But, I don't know. I think it's really pretty. I think this is really, really pretty. Goodness. And this is something, of course, that I would never be able to recreate. Uh, wow. Okay, I need another skein. I need more yarn. I need more yarn. I've got more colors to randomly combine together. Okay, I'm going to... I try to use gloves, but I also try not to get powder all over my skin. Uh, let's go see what I have. Got another stroll. Yeah, 
I'm wondering if maybe I could do like a random mystery color along with like random colors of activize and just see what I can create. See how many different kinds of colorways I can create. Okay, I am I'm going to go ahead and let that yarn sit in the pot for now because there's really no reason to move it. I freaking love this. It has very little to do with our fruit salad, but I love it. Um, hmm. Okay. More yarn. More yarn. Okay. I mean, I have an obscene, obscene amount of yarn. Okay. This is what we're going to do. Problem is, I've got a lot of that green, and I don't really, of course, as there's like, Okay, I guess we will be playing with some of the green. Um, <laughs> this is when, like, thoughts have left the building and Oh, these are probably going to be super, super fun for me to, oh dear, for me to wash. But don't worry, we will spread these colors. Ha ha, oh see, even that is pretty. Now, at some point, I'm just going to have to call it and then, like, rinse out the cups. Although, unless I just cracked that. Um, so that is definitely something that will need to happen at some point. But right now, I kind of wish that the green wasn't on the counter. But we're going to go with it and we're going to get... We're thinking about fall already, friends. <laughs> Let's see if I squeeze. Nope. Oh, sorry, friend. Da, da, da. If I squeeze this, we've got a nice yellowish water. Oh, look how pretty. Oh. This feels like finger painting. Okay, I'm a little nervous about this green, but I do want to use it because we have it. And that is the challenge I am imposing on myself. There's a lot of it, though. Yeah, I can't use it all. I tried. But I'm going to need more yarn! <laughs> I need more yarn. Okay. Um, shoot. You know, if I had planned and then went and wet, like, three skeins, then I wouldn't be wasting so many gloves. But you know what? Stuff happens. Okay, this is what we're going to do for this next day. Okay. 
another scroll. We are going to mix the remaining stuff down. Okay. Goodness. I freaking love this. I don't think I would have done that without in an accident. Okay. okay. So we're on the counter. We're a little buffer. And oh, I can double layer. Okay. Okay. First, we're going to remove things. Um, so I have all of the yarn in a pasta insert right now. Oh, this is pretty. I'll show you guys once things have cooled a bit more. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Okay, so that is really, really pretty. I am now taking, oh, I should put the picture of them first. And then I'm going to take those friends and put them in. Gosh, this is pretty. And it's not even really doing it justice. Okay. I'm going to put these in the spinner basket. And then whatever I create on this last skein, I can, um, so these are going to going in the pasta insert, and then I can put this steamer basket on top of it to create like a second layer. So that will work. Okay. I need gloves. And let me check the chat. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, don't talk to me about overflowing yarn. Um, my house is a little bit of a disaster. Okay, oh, and I have a third glove that I do not need. Um, okay, this is what we're going to do. So what's the color in here right now? is just that little bit of water that came from the ends like of the spoons that we used at the very beginning and we are going to kind of mix everything together ish It's not going to be perfect. I'm curious what kind of color we will create. A lot of these are fairly empty already. I'm sure it, I'm actually not sure because the color that is the most dominant and all of this that's left is definitely the green. Oof, that color is pretty. Okay. So first, I guess with this top part. more wiping up the counter. Okay. And so doing this, dipping and squeezing. 
So I have no idea how this will exactly turn out. Think of it almost like a cool vat. Because you'll notice we're getting less and less pigment in that water. Da, da, da. Okay. This is, it's different. Okay, I'm just going to leave this to soak in here for a bit. But that is our, let's attempt at leaving nothing behind. Um, I'm not set a summer timer. Okay, it's 9.26. I'm going to quickly, actually, I'm going to try to rinse the thing. I'm going to put in the soap. Ugh. No, I'm totally going to rinse. We'll check back in on this yarn mop from our yarn mop techniques in a little bit. But for now, ah! oh, it feels so good to take off that mask. Okay, and now I'm going to put away the dry dye containers. Which I store in some kind of Ikea tub that then fits on my Ikea shelf. And I am very, very careful about not leaving these tubs downstairs around any children. Um. Thankfully, the kids do stay out of my studio. In theory, they could, I suppose, get into this, but they stay away from my from the yard. leave that one overnight just wiping around where the dry containers were but there's some pigment down there but there's liquid pigment around so I'll clean that up more thoroughly when I turn when I'm cleaning up but oh I want to set a timer here 20 minutes. Oh, that's so pretty. Okay, and this is still hot. I don't want to set it down, but it's beautiful. There's varying levels of pigmentation. There could be some color bleeding. I will let it all cool down completely. Um, I will let it all cool down completely before I wash it, and I probably won't wash it until tomorrow. And I'll probably wash it off camera. Maybe I'd pop in if there, oh, ow. Ow. Oh, my bobby pin lost the like thing on the side. Oh, us, wait. Us Gribbles, thank you so much for the super chat. Super chat. Us Gribbles said in a beautiful blue box that's coming up on the chat right now, uh, more roving videos, please. Um, I actually have a roving leave no die behind that is uh, coming up. 
uh, I just filmed the conclusions. So I don't know when it'll be out, probably March or April. Um, but yeah, we'll see how things go because it, um, the Leave No Die Behind sort of fit in where I have a gap in the schedule that I need to fill. <laughs> um, so let's see. Um, yeah, so the, the, a big reason why I do recaps after these live streams is I think that, um, and maybe it's something that, I don't know if I'm unique about this, but when I used to look at dyeing tutorials, people would show the dyeing yarn and then that would be the end. And I was like, well, but I want to know what it looks like once it's dry. And so then I started including that in my videos. And I think that's one thing that, at least at the time, that I did a little differently. Um, so that's why one reason why I do these re recaps. And then now that we're doing these dialogues, it's also fun because I can include your photos. And I really, really love doing that. Um, so I don't, so there will be some pastel moments in it. The colors are going to be bright and vibrant, though because it's so pigmented with the dry powder. Um, it's really hard to make dry powder super pastel. Um, you, if you want like a real pastel color, you want to dissolve it first. Um, the, the mop there though, that is fairly pastel. That's sort of like a weird green, but you know, <laughs> I'm using up all the dye. Um, so let's see, yes, it's beautiful, more roving. Um, yeah, no, the kids, like, I can leave the spinning wheel out and the kids won't touch it and not, without permission. Like, they, there are a lot of things they don't listen about, but they know yarn is serious business in this house. Uh, so I'm very, very lucky, lucky about that. But, yeah, I mean, Lucas is, like, all excited for some camp mom this summer because he's like, we're going to die yarn. <laughs> and so he's all excited. Um, and... Ryder like is interested a little bit in dyeing yarn, but mostly if I ask him if he wants to do a video, he says no thanks. And so I'm not gonna, that's why like there's been more, a lot more Lucas dyeing yarn videos than Ryder dyeing yarn videos because the writer doesn't like want, like I'd only have them do it if they want to do it, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the, whew, can't believe I like, scratched my skull with that. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. This is fun. And playing with warm colors is fun. Did I nail this exactly? No. Maybe ugh, I wish I had like a burgundy color because there's that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, right there. That like raisin cranberry, that deep, deep, deep red that I don't know if I cut, quite got. There's definitely probably more white in mine, but I didn't want to like some of the whites, like that highlight on the pomegranate and on the apple, I sort of wanted to leave that in. This would definitely be a fun technique for doing like a stovetop or like a squirt bottle um, kind of thing as well. But I just really wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to just be very tactile and play with the colors. And I haven't done dry powder on the streams for a while. I'm curious to hear what you guys thought about the audio when I had my mask on. Um, I do have, so I now have a mic pack. I haven't tried using it yet. I'm a little afraid to use it. Keith got me one for Hanukkah. Um, I'm afraid. I'm afraid, I think, of filming a video and having all the audio lost because the audio is all of my notes. Even though I guess I have filmed some fun, like, time lapse videos, and I'm like, there's one, and it was so much fun. I was like, it was a video. And like, I had notes and I was like, uh, I just didn't really, I don't know if it was like, I didn't want to edit it. I just, I realized I was like, okay, wait, it would be really fun if I make this a time lapse and I try to narrate it, just remembering and like observing what I did. And so that was really, really fun. Um, so I suppose if I lost audio, then like I could do that, but I worry about like losing audio or like getting everything like synced up or also just if there's cords attached to my person, my ability to like move and run around would be like harder and so I don't know I, I I'm nervous but I probably should do it um some breaking acid dye and roving yeah that would be that would be really fun um oh good I'm glad I'm glad the audio is fine um yeah I definitely want to do more roving videos right now so you guys have all been awesome because I 
in 2020 so far, I don't know if you've noticed, but we've had a lot of viewer sponsored videos, uh, which has been absolutely amazing. And um, because it helps, it's basically like upfront finances the cost of like the, the yarn and the dye and stuff that I'm using in the video. And so that helps and allows like me to do like go a little bigger with and do more skeins or like helps like maybe even not in that video but helps on another video me try like more things and get more samples and and whatnot um the only downfall which is this isn't a bad thing at all the only downfall to the viewer sponsored videos is that the viewers pick the yarn base that is going to be featured in the video um and so because of that um, there's going to be a lot of Swiss DK coming up. That's been a very, very popular choice right now. Um, but I tried to like pull in some other skeins and like mix and match and like, and do some like fun side by side comparisons and things. But that is one reason why there's going to be so much of like, like swish and stroll in, in some of the Dipot Weekly episodes. But, um, I mean, tonight I didn't go too far out into like new yarn bases, but yeah, there's there's definitely some videos where I'll like I'll pull I I love doing side by side comparisons on different yarn bases and there's a video I don't know if it's this Tuesday but I'm curious um oh well. so Dipo Weekly the like work you know how movies have a working title. And then they get before they get their real title like before when i was like first brainstorming about like the kickstarter and stuff it was like this week in the die pot so but the like spreadsheet that i use is still called this week in the die pot even though it's like that's too long i need something and i think keith even came up with die pot weekly um but then of course midstream i was like okay we'll do two not just one um oh oh this week is gonna be good this week is gonna be good um <laughs> yeah so a lot of i think a lot of stroll but it's still gonna be a really fun week um and in the two videos coming up this week one thing that i think is especially especially fun is that i do leave no die i leave no die behind within those videos themselves which i think is pretty fun so rather than because also like with all the viewer sponsored videos coming up, the schedule has like been full. And so that means there's more like die pot weeklies and less like random, like whatever I'm throwing together for a random video. Um, and so I included some of the leave no die behind in the two videos that are coming up just because I was like, was that color? I did a little bit of color mixing or I had like just pulled and diluted some colors and so I had some left over and so yeah I just said what YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain its smooth streaming apologies apologies for any of that um if I could bottle and sell that energy I would buy some I would buy some too <laughs> the irony um so I have a fatigue disorder <laughs> And it's really ironic because I definitely, at Camp One Year, I got the Energizer Bunny Award, uh, which I was very proud of. My personality has always been like upbeat and so energetic, which makes it that much more ironic that like I have a fatigue disorder. <laughs> um, so I have chronic fatigue syndrome and it's been going on far too long. I think I'm about to do another sleep study because it's been a long time and I'm, I've now had two kids and like all this other stuff and so it's worth um yeah it's probably been like a decade uh so it's worth like doing another sleep study seeing like if they observe anything or maybe yeah who knows but uh yeah so the nice thing is that like in doing this i can maintain like like a balance and stuff but yeah i would i would do a lot for more energy because i'm like if i had the energy of like college rebecca and early grad school rebecca i could do a video every day <laughs> two videos a week is very manageable um 
but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm like, oh man, if I had like more energy to like put into like in doing more, I was like, they're all like, these things I'd love to do, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, just towards the end now. Um, it's like my, my brain, the nice thing is after 10 years of living with a fatigue disorder, I'm really, really good at disconnecting my brain a little bit. And so the thing that I struggle with as I get into the fatigue fog is like a lot of decision making. But when it comes to like knitting or dyeing yarn, like it's sort of free and I let the yarn speak to me. So I'm on this place where like I'm just going with the flow and it works for the like artistic things. Um, but like if I had to make a decision like book an, I would not be able to book an airplane flight right now or something like that would cause me way too much anxiety. <laughs> uh, if that, if that makes sense. Um, but I've got reasonable coping skills, but yeah, I miss <sighs> like, I, I, it's like, I have to make a choice before, like, I love running, which I haven't done in a long time because I have to make a choice between like running like two miles or editing a video that day, because if I run two miles, then I'm not going to be able to do much else. So it's like a. Yeah, the, the balance is hard. Um, <laughs> oh man, I don't even know if I was complaining about being tired in 2009 on Facebook. Um, I don't think I was posting as much back then. I definitely started posting a lot more once the, um, I had the kids. But hey, I will say, if you have a fatigue disorder, it makes, it helped, like I dealt with the young parenthood, young children fatigue a lot better because I had coping skills in place. Um, so that was less of a shock because I'm like, I don't sleep very much anyway. Um, but, but yeah, so there's that. Um, <laughs> I make myself tired in the live streams. Like they're, they're really, really fun and I really enjoy doing this, but I definitely have like a good, so time right yeah. I have a good sense of what I can do. And when, when I'm doing these live streams, a lot of it is fairly similar to what I do when I'm doing a day of filming. Um, because I'll jump, I'll usually have a couple different projects that I'm filming at once. So I might do like in a week, do like a, two to three filming days and then like a couple editing days. Or I might have a week that's all editing because I'm catching up because I had a very productive dying week. Um, but the one difference, I guess, is instead of sitting down and chatting, then I might be watching like a YouTube video or editing. editing. Um, so there's that. But I try to do, um, I do a lot of editing as I go, if that makes sense. Um, so I do, I'll do, I try to do a lot of editing and give myself notes like on the, on the camera and like I'll film the scenes like shorter because it just makes it a little easier to like work and cut together. Um, but I also do minimal editing because my videos are a little too long sometimes, but I, I try. <laughs> there was a period of time that they were also like 40 minutes. And so I've been trying to like, I aim for like, trying to be around 20 is what I sort of try for. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. I want to check in on this yarn mop. Um, which is definitely not bright as our fruit salad. Oh my goodness. Some days I just feel real old and I'm only 36. <laughs> but I'm a square. I want to be triangle. Three sides. One, two, three. Um, and a circle, circle. Ah, so you can see we've absorbed a lot of color. There's some like yellowish in there. At some point, I'll probably just call it and then pop it into the steamer. Uh, but you know, we used up, okay, yeah, there's some color on here, but we've used up almost all of 
the dye that we had today. So I will set that, if not tonight, then tomorrow. Um, this is still really warm, but here's our fruit salad yarn. It's so beautiful. It's so, so, so beautiful. I hope that it's not going to bleed. Um, okay, that's hot. Whoa. We're all good. It was just like onto the stove and it will let it flop a bit. That is nice and hot. I'm reducing the heat on you. You know what? Three minutes left on the timer. I'm going to just turn off the heat. That's plenty hot <laughs> for that other yarn mop stuff that we did. But anyway, uh, yeah, and I do, I said this at the beginning, but um, uh, I have been slower at Raplon. I, we've been getting a lot, and I mean, this is not a complaint, it is amazing. Um, a lot, I've been getting, having a lot more people reach out to me on Instagram and Facebook, which is great. Um, and I've had some, yeah, so I've been slower at replying to some direct messages. I have, and so if I miss, if you've reached out to me and you haven't heard from me in a while, then try again. Because sometimes, like, since there's so many different, like, inboxes, <laughs> I, something might slip through the cracks a little bit. And I'm really sorry. But I do try my best to try to keep up with questions and comments and things. Um, there's just been a lot more, which is... Um, awesome and I appreciate it but yeah it's just me so <laughs> I uh, I yeah there there were there needs to be some more growth before uh, I can hire an assistant or editor or oh, an editor oh. <laughs> in the short term it, yeah an editor would be more work for me probably because of the like way that like I know the material but yeah the my goals goals <laughs> um so the program I use for editing right now I don't love I think I might go back to so I use video pad video editor which I think the version I have is a little old because to update it I'd have to buy the new version and I was like I don't love it enough um I used for a while I used like Adobe Premiere Pro, which is more beefy. Like I don't need something that big, you know, but I might go back to it if I'm going to get a um, Photoshop subscription again, because I used to have, like I used to have Photoshop back before they went to the subscription model. And so I just had the program. And so now like, uh, yeah, I think I will, repurchase Photoshop because I like um, editing pictures. I like, you have a group photo. I can like swap someone's head out if someone's eyes are closed. And that's great. I love being able to do that. And that I can do. That's like my Photoshop like ability. Um, but yeah, so I'm considering going back to Adobe. Not that I remember how to use Premiere Pro anymore. Um, so I have a PC. I know a lot of people with Macs use Final Cut but I think that that's just for Max, so I don't know. Um, yes, but yeah, so that's a little bit about editing. Um, how do I find the editing part of YouTube? Do I enjoy it or is it a necessary evil? So it's both. Like, sometimes I really enjoy, like, I enjoy being able to edit the stuff. And let me go turn that off. Um, I, I definitely, but my favorite part is the filming. And then there's some videos that when I put together, like I'm super, super proud of. Um, like, I think one of the videos I had the most fun editing in a long time was um, when I did like the Indie Dyer reacts and I reacted to some like viral video that was like, ooh, look, you can dye this beautiful bright blue with pennies and like it did all this stuff and I just re I watched it gave my reactions but what was fun is that in a lot of the examples they gave they were th a lot of them were things that I've tried um, and so I was able to show like screenshots from videos that I did um, to sort of it was fun because I was like so this is clickbait <laughs> like this is clickbait 
Um, this, yeah, it was just, it was really, really, really fun for me to share what my experiences with some of those natural dyes were um, and be like, of course, I was like, oh, I think they're buying shirts. It didn't even occur to me that they probably were photoshopping the final results, <laughs> which like, of course, if they're going to be lazy enough to like fake results, of course, they're going to just Photoshop it. <laughs> um, so that was fun to edit because it was so different from what I normally do. Um, but like I have like my my rhythm. Um, there's some things like, and like I did a live stream ages ago because I was going to do like a dining room with food coloring 101 and I got all this b-roll and I just had to, I even like kind of have the script. I just, I think that now I did some videos for a, um, I was commissioned to do some videos and so I did a lot more talking heads and so it was a lot more of me editing me straight to camera, which is a lot harder to do than editing behind the camera. I just yeah because you know you'll be editing and then you're like oh i like looked away like i did something weird with my face or like i wasn't in focus and so then i'd have to refilm it but i've also gotten a little more comfortable being in front of the camera and editing myself so that's why i've been popping in front of the camera in videos more so i mean i don't it's definitely not my favorite part i don't loathe it if i loathe it then like I wouldn't do things that had as many cuts, but like I've been enjoying, one thing I've been enjoying lately is doing time lapses. Um, and so like I'll do, rather than only showing a little bit of the video and then like magically going to the done yarn, it's fun to at least show like sped up, this is everything that I'm doing to add the color to yarn and then talk not while I was doing that. And so that like, that's something like, I don't know, it's just fun doing, trying things a little differently sometimes. So, uh, yeah, but so the, but yeah, I'd say in general, the editing is a necessary evil. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, if I'm making a video for like another company, which like, or if I was making a video not for me, it takes a lot longer than I'm making a video for this channel. Um, because a lot of times I don't watch <laughs> Um, I do a very like bare bones editing um, and so, like and like an edit as I go and I'm not necessarily going back through and rewatching things over and over and over again. Um, and so that allows me to put out as many videos as I do. Um, if, yeah, and, and so the nice thing is like I certainly cut things out, but most of the footage that I film for a given video parts of that end up in it and so that editing as I go helps um but yeah <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in this was a lot more like chat heavy versus like dye heavy live stream but I think the colors we created were really awesome um yeah and so sometimes so true facts sometimes when I do the voiceovers for the time lapse sometimes I do the dyeing and then I record the voiceover immediately. Sometimes I record part of that voiceover before I do it in like an anticipation that I say it in past tense. So like I will have just done like one side of like speckling and then I'll talk about how like I flipped more times. Yeah, so sometimes I do it before. But whenever I'm doing that and oh gosh, I'll be so like embarrassed if someone that ends up like the audio accidentally ends up in a video, but I'm always like voiceover. Um, and then do it so that way I know right away which clip okay I want the audio from this one and then there's a time lapse I just say time lapse and I'm like oh okay that's what I need for that so uh, that's my one of my little like hacks uh, to just make it easier um, but anyway I'm gonna go <laughs> and go to bed <laughs> well no I'm gonna go and um, remove the yarn steam set the last one and clean up a bit and then go to bed but I really want to thank you guys for tuning in and joining um, oh yeah I mean I'd be happy to talk I've been meaning to do a video of like like the like kind of like the business side stuff like I don't mind share like I don't really have trade secrets or anything um, and I'm willing to like 
be open and share like um, things. I just uh, need to think about the best way to format something like that. Um, but yeah, I think that like, you know, I feel I'm very, very thankful for all of you guys for tuning in and hanging out on these videos. For those of you that like shop, I mean, I'm lucky because like then the people that go and like shop at Etsy, like they know I'm a real person. And so it's, it's kind of nice because like, thankfully I haven't made like a ton of mistakes, but I've definitely like misshipped things before and people have been really understanding. And so it's like very, I don't know, appreciative and I don't know, I'm very, very thankful for all of you. Um, so yeah, subscribe, like, leave comments below. Uh, let me know what you think I should pick for color inspiration in the future. I have lots of ideas, but um, this fruit salad really called me. Yeah, so I think I think that when it comes to selling yarn, and so for me, like my the way I got into it is a bit different because I started making videos. Well, because way back then, a company was basically paying me money for like a license to have the rights to use my videos, which were, I still had the rights to my videos too. Um, but so like I was doing that. And so then I was like, Oh, I, so I can get paid like the, it wasn't a lot of money, but so I can get paid, I should make another video. And so then I started making more and more videos and be like, Oh, I should do more dying yarn. Um, and then, yeah, when I decided it wasn't necessarily the goal for an Etsy shop, but when I was doing the, yeah, it's, it ended up being like this, I needed the shop because I was accumulating too much yarn that I was dying. And so it's very like a different sort of path from a lot of other indie dyers. Um, and so, yeah, so I've been lucky because I'm basically a walking commercial for my shop. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's not a business model that that like might work for everyone, but uh, for me, like, like the shop supports these videos and like, and stuff for sure. But like, I think my business is, I'm like, I'm a YouTuber. Like the videos are what I consider my business and the shop is sort of the like financing, one of the financing options, um, if that makes sense. But anyway, I'm getting a little loopy. Um, yeah, the, it's been a while since I streamed with the mask on and I definitely realized it was like, it's a lot harder to, cause like, it's harder to take a deep breath. And so it's harder. Yeah. Definitely realize like, oh, it like is a lot more breathing effort than just I mean, normal breathing doesn't really feel like effort. Um, <laughs> so I'm more aware of it, but anyway, all right, I'm going to head out. Thank you guys all so much. Um, yeah, links of all kinds of links in the video description and stuff like that. So thank you all. And I will chat with everyone soon. All right. Now I'm going to make my faces appear. Let's put that up da, 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 and then wait for it to go through on the other end. Um, whew. <sighs> I love you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I cannot type. Aha, and then I'm gonna make my face go away and then I click and stream. All right, good night everyone.